Hello everyone and welcome to the Luna module. In this little operation series, we're going to be uh, diving deeper into some of the systems that you have available in the Luna module for re-entry. Uh, but uh, we're going to start off with just getting a quick overview of how everything kind of fits together. So what I've done is that I loaded up the Cold and Dark mission from the free play menu of Apollo. And as you can see, we're now in orbit around Earth. Uh, currently docked and attached to the command and service module. Uh, so if we take a quick look at the map overview, you, you can see that we're currently uh, here and uh, orbiting Earth. Uh, another new thing that uh, this latest version of reentry comes with is an overview control. So you can actually go and check out the moon if you want to, uh, the Earth, and then of course the spacecraft itself. So. Let's just jump straight into the Luna module cockpit. As you can see, there's a lot of systems and switches and components and things located around in the cockpit. You can navigate around just like you did in the command module, uh, like you used to. But as you can see, there's a lot of switches and uh, things involved. Uh, the, uh, the Luna module was used by two astronauts to land on the moon and of course required uh, quite a lot of training and study to operate. The same accounts for re-entry and uh, hopefully this video will uh, make it a little bit easier for you to get into all of this material. Uh, if we take a look at the re-entry uh, manual section, uh, you can find a manual called the Luna Module Flight Manual. This is a, a little manual that I've uh, supplied with the release of the Luna module for re-entry and contains descriptions and details of all of these different sections that we're going to be running through in this series. As you can see, there's, for example, chapter two, which has the major components. And you can see kind of how everything fits together when it comes to the Luna module, uh, what components are, uh, components are part of this. You can see the different stages, uh, such as the ascent stage, and the uh, descent stage and of course the interior. Uh, the lunar module as I mentioned consists of two different st stages. The ascent stage is where the crew uh, are sitting and it's what you see inside of these panels. So this kind of, uh, uh, let's uh, zoom a little bit in, you can see that uh, the gray kind of module there is where the crew is sitting and that's the ascent stage. And then you have the descent stage, which is basically the legs and that yellow golden looking part there. Uh, the reason it has two stages is that uh, the first stage has an engine here that's used to decelerate the lunar module and then perform the landing on the moon. And once landed, the crew goes out and you know start exploring the moon. And when they want to leave, they enter the lunar module back uh, uh, they enter the lunar module and uh, prepare it for takeoff. On launch, the uh, lunar module's uh, ascent stage separates from the descent stage and making the descent stage into a launch pad used to get off the moon is left on the moon while the ascent stage then ascends and rendezvous with the command module and performs the docking before they return to Earth. So that's why it's two stages and it also has two engines. The ascent stage has one engine called the APS, the ascent propulsion system. And then you have the DPS, which is the descent propulsion system. So that's uh, kind of the major engines that you have in here. You also have a couple of thrusters used to uh, uh, maneuver the spacecraft as well as do some minor translations. And then uh, you also have some landing legs uh, these are going to be extended before the lunar landing uh, so they can uh, land in a very stable manner. Uh, in addition, there's some things on top of uh, this lunar module, such as, for example, uh, the docking target used to dock with the lunar module when uh, you come from a command module perspective. And in addition, uh, I'm just going to show you this as well. If you go back into the command module, and uh, let's go to the uh, window here. Uh, you can see that there's now a new button called Toggle Docking Target. I can enable this to insert a 
docking target for the Luna module. And this one is then used to perform a docking when the Luna module is the active spacecraft to perform the docking of various reasons. But usually uh, the correct uh, maneuver is that the persons in uh, the person inside of the clan module performs the docking while the Luna module remains uh, still. Anyways. Let's go back into the Luna module and take a little uh, look at the different panels. So what you have here is two different crew stations. The first one is the commander station, and uh, this is where the commander are standing. And then you have the Luna module pilot station um, on this side where the pilot is standing. There's no seats. The astronauts were actually standing inside of the Luna module and uh, did all the maneuvers. And during the nights or sleeping periods, uh, they would just uh, put their beds out in the compartment behind us here. And uh, they lie quite tight, just uh, uh, above each other. Uh, as you can see, this entire space is very cramped for two persons. Uh, so what we have is a few panels. You can see the panels are labeled one, two, three, and then it goes uh, let's see, uh, goes to the circuit breakers here, which is panel 11 and 16. Both of them are uh, all of the circuit breakers that you have available. And uh, the panels below here, such as the uh, computer and uh, the light panel, as well as mission timer and the uh, AGS is located just below these main panels. However, the main panels that you're mainly going to be interacting with is panel one and two, and of course, number three. But the guidance computer, uh, which is the LGC, the lunar guidance computer, is used to operate the entire computer system. Now, this functions kind of the same way as the Apollo guidance uh, computer, but with, uh, with different programs. Another thing that you notice is that you have these side panels as well. Uh, so you have uh, panel eight, which is communication, and then you have uh, the electrical uh, explosive devices system here, which will be used to trigger controlled explosions around inside of the spacecraft to uh, trigger events. Uh, on the other side, you have panel 14, which is the electrical power panel. This is where you control most of the electrical power, in addition to, of course, all of the circuit breakers that you have. And then below there, you have the radio communication uh, controls as well, and antenna control. Behind you, you also have a couple of panels. You have the ECS. This is the environmental control system. Uh, this one is all about oxygen. And then you have the bottom one, which is all about water and, uh, and uh, the subliminator, the vaporizer, and so on. You have oxygen flow, and uh, also you have the canisters used to, for example, clean the air inside of the lunar module. As you used to from Apollo, the lights are controlled by these uh, rotating uh, knobs and you can use them to set the intensity of uh, different things. Uh, there's one for this side and then you also have a little bit of control uh, for this side as well. This is mainly the floodlights. Above you there's some floodlights. All of them are now currently on because of the uh, hatch being opened. And you can open and close the hatch using this button. We will leave it open for now as uh, I want to uh, let the tunnel to the command module uh, remain open. In addition, you have uh, three windows. Uh, this is the commander window and the pilot's window. And then you also have a little window here on the roof, which is used for docking. You have two attitude indicators. Uh, this is the commander's attitude indicator, and then you have the pilot's attitude indicator over here. And this is also functioning in the same way as the one in the command module, and it kind of looks very similar, uh, familiar as well. Uh, 
So let's go through some of the major systems. Uh, let's start with the electrical power system. It was located over here, and you can see that there's uh, some switches used to control different batteries. As you can see, it's divided into uh, th uh, three sections. You have the descent power section, uh, which consists of five batteries used uh, while the descent stage is connected. When you separate from the descent stage, the ascent stage is the one that uh, uh, takes over uh, the entire power uh, or electricity flow and has two batteries. Uh, you can connect them both to the lunar module uh, feed or the commander's feed. And what this means is that the lunar module consists of two DC buses. One is called the commander's bus, and most of the components that belong to that bus is located here on panel 11. And then you have the uh, lunar module pilot DC bus over here, which consists of most of these systems. Uh, it's possible to connect these two systems together. Uh, so if, for example, some batteries fail or you getting external power from the command module or from the launch pad or something then you can tie everything together and uh, the uh, commander's bus could be powering the uh, lunar module power bus and, and vice versa by the power source of course and then lastly you have AC uh, power which is uh, controlled by two inverters inverter one and two these are used to get AC power, uh, which is required by a lot of the systems, such as, for example, uh, the uh, lights that goes behind this panel. All, all of that is powered by AC power. And the two inverters are then converting DC power into AC through those uh, inverters. Okay, uh, we'll be uh, diving deeper into the electrical power system in the next lesson. Uh, for now, let's move on to uh, the uh, propulsion system. So we have two different propulsion systems. Uh, as I mentioned, one is the descent propulsion system, and then the second one is the ascent propulsion system. And uh, what this means is that the uh, two engines that we have available are controlled by this. Uh, the MPS, which is called the main propulsion system, it consists of both of those systems. But they are very individual and not connected at all uh, and uh, operates in, uh, in a very isolated fashion. But of course, they function in a very similar way. Both are uh, pressurized by helium. So you can see that there's some helium inside of the system. Uh, let's go to the helium monitor here on panel one. You can see that the uh, descent stage has two helium uh, tanks that are connected to it. One is the ambient uh, helium tank. You can see that the current pressure inside of the ambient helium tank is 1,592 PSI. And, and this means that when we are ready to pressurize the descent engine, we can use the explosive devices system to trigger an event that will uh, make this possible. And then uh, the second uh, tank is supercritical. This is uh, a larger tank and is the main pressurization um, tank for the descent system. Uh, but you cannot use this unless the engine is running or else it would be cooling down everything. But mainly the uh, propulsion systems are used to get down on the moon and back up uh, during ascent. Then you have the reaction control system. These are uh, small thrusters located in quads around the cockpit. Uh, let's see if we can still see some of them. It's getting dark. Um, yeah, you can see it here. So these small thrusters, they are all used to change the attitude of the lunar module. There's uh, four quads. Uh, each quad has two systems in it, uh, system A and system B uh, for redundancy. Uh, each of the quads also have, um, uh, have uh, heaters to make sure that the temperature inside of the quads are within uh, a given limit. Usually, uh, as you can see right now, it's uh, quite good, and we can start using uh, the, th the uh, quads. 
but if you leave the heaters off uh, this will start to reduce and uh, it needs to be at least 120 degrees before you can start using them again uh, each of the quads has their individual propulsion system so this means that it has an oxidizer and fuel tanks that uh, provides fuel to them and you can connect the uh, these using uh, wall valves and uh, let's just open all of them so you can see that there's a barber pole indicating that this is uh, now uh, connected and ready uh, but of course there's still a lot of things that needs to be done for the pressurization to happen so we're not going to actually be triggering any of this we're going to go back to that in the reaction control system lesson but one last thing I want to mention is that each of these uh, substance sources can be connected using a crossfeed and you can also, if you want to save fuel inside of the quads, you can also connect the quads to the ascent stage fuel and oxidizer tank. And if you do this, uh, the quads will consume substances from this system instead of the first appear substance system. So that's a very brief introduction to the RCS system. The explosive devices system is used to uh, trigger controlled explosions and if we go a little bit closer to this you can see that there's a master arm this one is needed to perform any of these triggers and you can uh, think of this as a safety mechanism that allows you to make sure that you don't accidentally bump into one of these switches because if you do uh, there's uh, and no way to reverse that action so if you fire a trigger it's going to explode and the action will happen and you will not be able to recover from that so you need to make sure that you this, do this at the right time and at the time that you really want to do it uh, the explosive device system consists of two isolated um, batteries that each trigger uh, when you fire one of these things and this is just for redundancy you have system A and system B and these are controlled by the circuit breakers on both sides uh, this one here on ED explosive devices and logic pole A and then you have one on the other side as well these are then uh, used to trigger these explosions that will pressurize for example helium in RCS the descent system ascent uh, and you're going to open valves and uh, deploy the landing gear. Uh, the other system that you have is the uh, computer and the computer is uh, used to guide the uh, lunar module down to the lunar surface as well as uh, uh, control the thrusters in automatic manner or semi-automatic uh, automatic. it's also possible to use uh, a backup system for this called the uh, let's go over here and, and, and take a look at it the AGS it is the abort guidance system if something happens if something fails this is uh, the backup system you can think of this as the SCS for Apollo and this is the primary guidance uh, system uh, the computer works in a similar fashion to what you're used to from uh, Apollo. So you can enter verbs and uh, go into programs. And you can see that the program is running. And you can do things such as setting up the digital autopilot, uh, start changing things. And uh, these things will then become operational. Um, There's also a lot of instruments here, and uh, as you can see, some of these uh, readings ha readers has uh, a light above them. They're all extinguished because they have power, except for this one. You can see that uh, the tape thing here is now illuminated. This means that it's off or not getting signals that it needs to operate. So you can see that it's both on zero, zero for now. However, uh, once you activate the radar, this will become active. 
and the radar is used to get altitude data when you're closing down on the lunar surface uh, or rendezvous data uh, when you're rendezvousing with the clan module again. There's a, it's a radar on top of the roof of this spacecraft that uh, performs this uh, in addition to some located around the body. Uh, the other system that you has, uh, have is the uh, environmental control system, and this is located behind you, as I mentioned. Uh, this one is used to control cooling, such as uh, the glycol loops, and a subliminator that cools down the spacecraft and the components. You see that the glycol is currently quite warm. This is because I haven't activated the subliminator yet. The subliminator is used to uh, uh, cool down the glycol uh, using a layer of ice on the outside of the uh, spacecraft. The subliminator is uh, activated uh, by using these systems as well as uh, some fuses. But I didn't run through that checklist earlier when I set everything up. So, But we're going to be doing that in a later lesson. The attitude and control, uh, uh, or stabilization and control system, is mainly controlled on panel three and allows you to change attitude control in uh, both roll, pitch, or yaw, and then also select which mode control is controlling the spacecraft. Is it the primary guidance uh, system? Is it the AGS? Uh, or is it attitude hold based on these, and so on? Another thing is the X pointer. Uh, this one is not uh, properly implemented just yet, but uh, of course this will happen very soon. And when it does, we're going to be having a dedicated lesson for that. But how this works is that it's going to show you different values based on what you select. And this could be uh, your velocity, lateral velocity, or uh, uh, targeting when you're rendering and so on. Uh, this cross will then go out around on the uh, uh, X-pointer and then uh, your main job would be to try to center this. The lunar contact light will illuminate blue when you're in contact with uh, the moon surface. So yeah, that's basically it. We're uh, scratch the surface, but uh, this will give you a quick overview of the different major components that you have available in the lunar module. And then in the next lessons, we're going to be diving deeper into how everything works. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see, uh, hope to see you in the next lesson.